If you've been following things in Saskatchewan lately, then you know that I, along with thousands of other teachers around the province, are currently in a heated round of negotiations with the government and on strike right now. And in honor of that, each week I'm going to highlight a different thing that the SAS party have done. Spoiler alert, none of them are good. I mean, I say I do this out of spite, but really, SAS party? I do it for fun. I know you watch these, and they piss you off. It fuels me. This week, we're going to talk about their incredibly obvious corruption. I mean, we're going to be talking about that every week, but this week, we're going to be talking about one very specific element. You see, they're convinced that the rules and the laws don't apply to them. It's a very common belief among the privileged and the powerful that their proximity to power means that they simply are good. The fact that they're good means that they don't need to follow the rules. The rules are for bad people. Since they're good people, they can just be good, you see. And as a result, they kind of do whatever they want. It's like the super mean people who go to church a lot. You know them. So at the time of the 2020 Saskatchewan election, the Sask party had 48 seats. They're down to 45, and it's entirely their own doing. You see, they keep having to step down in disgrace. Disgrace is kind of their whole thing. Kind of all they're good at. So first up, you have Nadine Wilson. Queen Nadine. So Nadine's always been a bit unusual. So in 2019, Wilson was charged with two counts of assault against her stepmother and stepbrother. She allegedly forced her way into an apartment and an assault was allegedly committed. So this was sent to mediation and the charges were withdrawn, but she did resign her position as a provincial secretary. Then in 2020, she was made deputy speaker. She was actually almost speaker of the house, but then COVID hit and something very strange happened. You see, a lot of the Sask party base fell down the anti-vax rabbit hole and Nadine was definitely one of them. So check out this image of her in the Saskatchewan legislature in September of 2021, proudly displaying her I got vaccinated sticker. One snag, she did not got vaccinated. I believe it may be the first case of somebody needing to resign in disgrace due to sticker-based deception. But hey, there's a first time for everything. So after Nadine went independent, she advocated basically nonstop against any pandemic measures, including speaking at rallies, accusing other members of the legislature of bullying, and making a bunch of wild claims. Then she started her own party, the Saskatchewan United Party. We'll talk about that one another day. So there we go, one SAS party MLA down, didn't even make it a full year. Now the next two happen in rapid succession. First up, Ryan Domiter. So Ryan was elected in 2020, but then had to resign from caucus in November of 2023 after he was arrested for, quote, communicating with the purposes of obtaining sexual services. He was arrested on November 16th of 2023 as part of a larger sting operation into human trafficking. But, of course, because in Canada, the powerful never face consequences, he had the charges against him stayed. He went to an offender intervention program and completed a weekend course, and as a result, he will face no further consequence. Worth noting, the folks who decided to stay the charges against him are the Crown. The Crown is, of course, representing the government. One hand washes the other. And as if that wasn't enough, just two short months later, another MLA had to resign in disgrace. This time it was Greg Lawrence. He's had to resign after being charged for assault by choking and another separate charge of assault. The investigation began on June 27th of 2023, and we don't know when the SAS party was made aware of this. They're referring to the cases as, quote, historical complaints. And to the shock of nobody, the SAS party doesn't want to make any further comment. And Lawrence was unavailable for comment. Weird how the government never wants to comment about anything. Guess they're hoping nobody notices. Be a shame if someone made a whole video about it. And this isn't even the first time the SAS parties had run-ins with the law. They became the SAS party to distance himself from Grant Devine's criminal legacies. And before these three, there was Serge Leclerc. In 2010, he had to resign amid recordings of him discussing illegal drug use. Of course, he claimed that the tapes had been forged and that in a totally unrelated situation, he had destroyed the hard drive from his government laptop. What a crazy coincidence. And they're not even trying to distance themselves from the criminal divine years anymore. They literally invited convicted murderer Colin Thatcher as a guest for the speech from the throne. Like this is who they invite within their ranks. They just don't care. And this sort of stuff happens again and again. Like Don McMorris. In 2016, he was the minister responsible for the Sask Liquor and Gaming Authority as well as Saskatchewan government insurance which provides auto insurance to everyone in the province. He was pulled over and charged with impaired driving. He was driving a government vehicle at 11.30 in the morning and was weaving in and out of traffic. He blew a 0.21 at 11.30 in the morning and claims that it was because he had been drinking heavily the night before. This was the man literally in charge of safe driving in the province and he didn't even get removed from caucus. He just lost his ministerial position. Consequences. It's a SAS party. Drinking and driving is practically a qualification. 
Scott Moe has multiple charges and also killed a woman in a vehicle crash in his youth. A large number of SAS Party MLAs have had impaired driving charges in their past, and they claim to be tough on crime and applaud when former Premier Brad Wall mocks a hunger strike in prison. He said, quote, if you really don't like the prison food, there's one way to avoid it. That's don't go to prison. But then the SAS Party break the laws as they please. It's just crime after crime after crime, because in Saskatchewan, the law doesn't apply to the powerful. And whenever anybody stands against them, they just remove them. Like the Saskatchewan Human Rights Commission. You see, when Saskatchewan rolled out their gender and pronoun policy, the Human Rights Commission spoke up against it. One member resigned in protest. This week, the Saskatchewan government announced they were replacing literally everybody, the entire commission. Several of the new people are donors to the SAS Party and have direct connections, including the new chair. The chair has made a number of donations to the SAS Party through her company, Saskatoon Metals. Now the Minister of Justice, Bronwyn Eyre, claims that this was just because everybody's term just happened to simultaneously end, but that doesn't make any sense. Everybody who's currently in prior to this week had terms that started on different days and in different years. It's an obvious lie. They're just removing an obstacle to their unquestioned power, and this is scary stuff. They've also added a Saskatchewan Marshal Service, taking responsibility for legislative security. They're taking over firearms legislation. They're consolidating power wherever they can. The SAS Party aren't just corrupt, they're dangerous. They're trying to turn Saskatchewan into their own little political fiefdom, and it needs to be stopped. So come back next week for another segment of Sask Party Corruption. These will continue until teachers are given a fair deal. So Scott Mo, if you're watching this, you can stop this anytime. Until then, see you next week.